Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Bukamsom Tinkulu here. So I recently started this YouTube channel to discuss different health conditions and the first topic that I did was cardiovascular risk factors. These are your high blood pressures, high cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, etc. Now all these conditions have two main things in common. The first is that they can lead to the development of cardiovascular diseases, such as heart attack and stroke. The second is that management and prevention through lifestyle modification is fairly similar in all the conditions. And this is through diet as well as exercise. Please do view this video that I've tagged where I talk about how you can manage chronic illnesses with exercise. And in this video, what I'm going to do is discuss how you can manage chronic illnesses with diet change. What I'll do is tell you what the general recommendations for a healthy lifestyle is, as well as tell you what the good foods are and the bad foods are, why the good foods are good and why the bad foods are bad. I'll then give you my personal advice, which is based on my experience of changing my diet and trying to incorporate a healthy lifestyle into my life after I was diagnosed with a chronic illness. Guys, please do note that this video is for educational purposes. If you have any concerns or want a diet plan that is subjective to you, please do seek professional medical advice. Also, share this video with as many people as you can that you think will benefit from watching this and knowing of different types of foods and why they're good and why they're bad, etc. And subscribe to my channel if you wish to learn more about me after I was diagnosed with a chronic illness, as well as learn about different health conditions that are facing more and more people in this world today. diet consists of eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, including high fiber foods as well as unsaturated fats into your diet on a daily basis. What you also want to do is limit the amount of salt, cholesterol and saturated fats that you eat on a daily basis and avoid eating trans fats as well as sugar and sugar sweetened beverages as much as you possibly can. Also, do not forget to stay hydrated and the best drink that you can drink every day to keep you hydrated is clean, fresh water. Proteins are essential for the body because they help in building up tissues, repairing tissue, and replacing damaged tissue in the body. So protein is very important. They can be found in the form of animals and plants. In terms of plants, what you'll get is soybeans and other types of beans, nuts, etc. That's where you'll find most of your proteins. Whereas your animal ones would be general meat or sheep, uh, fish, chicken, cow, etc. Now let's look at the bad proteins and the good proteins. So your bad proteins are generally those that are processed meats. Cold cut meats, processed meats, bacon. The reason why these are bad is because they have a lot of preservatives and chemicals that are added to them that is just toxic for the body. And so they can lead to the development of some diseases, including cancer. So avoiding your processed meats, your cold cut meats, etc. is a good thing to do for your body. The second type that should be limited in terms of proteins is your red meats. Red meats have a lot of fat on them and this fat is your saturated fats which can be seen as bad because it can increase the amount of bad cholesterol in your blood that leads to other illnesses. So trying to limit the amount of red meat that you have can try and limit the amount of bad 
cholesterol that is in the blood. And lastly, your good proteins. Your good proteins are those that are lean cut. Um, your fish as well as your poultry is the best types of good protein that you can have. With your poultry, it doesn't mean your chicken with skin. You want to have your white cuts of chicken. And this will allow for the essential nutrients to be added to the body um, that is needed. Now, with protein, you don't really need that much to help with the repair and all that in your body. And what you want to do is try to get about 35 to 65 grams of protein in your body each day. So carbohydrates are good for the body because they provide the body with energy. And this allows us to do our daily activities with ease. Now, carbohydrates are known as sugars, and they range from sugar found in actual sugar cane to sugars found in fruit and vegetables, starchy foods, and high fiber foods. So when you look at sugar and sugar sweetened beverages, they are seen as bad because they lead to this increased surge of energy and then a decrease in your energy that is quite fast and leads to this feeling low. They also don't have much essential nutritional value and so adding them just leads to the surge of energy and glucose in the blood which is unnecessary for the body. Another problem with this increase in glucose in the blood is that when it's stored and it's too much it is converted into fat and remains in the body as a fat storage until and more energy is needed. So sugar sweetened beverages as well as sugar is not really good for the body in great amounts. But you can also get your sugar through vegetables as well as fruit. Vegetables and fruit are great and getting a variety of both is good. But guys also do remember that fruit has a lot of sugar in it as well. And so you don't want to increase your um, fruit intake too much that will lead to that surge in energy. But overall, you want to get about three to five servings of both fruit and vegetables together um, on a daily basis. Now, your carbohydrates are important because, you know, we do a lot of activities during the day and we need to keep our energy levels up. And so getting between 225 grams and 325 grams of carbohydrates on a daily basis is a great idea. Fats are important for the body because they ensure the cell membrane integrity of the body as well as they do produce some types of hormones and they are also seen as a source of energy. Now, there are three main types of fats that we know of. Our unsaturated fats, which are seen as our good fats. And this is because they increase the amount of good cholesterol in the body. So these are mainly your vegetable oils, as well as avocado and nuts. And some fruits and vegetables do have a bit of unsaturated fat in them. The next is saturated fat. They can be seen as bad because... There are some studies that say that they increase the amount of bad cholesterol in the blood. But other studies say that, that this, the amount of evidence is not enough. And so limiting saturated fats is probably best. These are mainly found in your butters, your fatty meats, as well as your tropical oils such as coconut oil. Lastly, we have our trans fats. Now, trans fats are bad fats because they do increase the amount of bad cholesterol in the blood. And what you want to do is limit the amount of trans fats overall. So these are hydrogenated vegetable fats, which is a fancy term for, fat, for vegetable fats that have been heated. As well as your cakes, your fried foods, etc. You want to try to limit that as much as possible because there are little to no nutritional values in those foods as well as a lot of sugar or salt which leads to a high caloric intake 
obesity, uh, etc. Now, with your fats, you want to try get about 44 grams to 77 grams of good fat on a daily basis. With cholesterol specifically through unsaturated fat, you want to get about 300 milligrams. Next, we have high fiber foods. High fiber foods are good for the body because they allow for good bowel movement when you know it's stuck a little bit <laughs> so it decreases constipation and allows for good flow of matter in the body now it is very important to get fiber in because if there are any matter that is left in the intestines for too long that matter can ferment and allow for more toxins to go into the body so you want to get rid of any matter in the gut as soon as you can now, high fiber foods are mainly found in beans, as well as your whole grain cereals and breads and pastas, etc., as well as your brown rice, and also your some of your fruits and vegetables do have fiber in them. So getting a variety of those is important as well. And you want to get about 30 grams per day uh, for adults. Next we have salt. Salt is something that we use on a daily basis to add some flavor to our food but too much salt is not good. The reason for this is because it allows for an imbalance in the internal environment of our cells in our body and now when there is that imbalance what happens is your body reacts by pooling more water into that environment to try counter the amount of salt in the environment. And this leads to an increase in your blood pressure because there's a lot of fluid in your body now. So decreasing salt intake is a very, very good idea. And what you wanna do is get about five grams, which is equivalent to one teaspoon of salt on a daily basis. So lastly, my intake on diets change. So there are different diets out there. I've tried quite a few, such as keto, intermittent fasting, Mediterranean diet, etc. Yes, so some diets are nice to do to lose weight, but they're not really sustainable in that you can do them for the rest of your life. And that's something that we seem to forget. When we talk about lifestyle modification, we mean changing our lifestyle for the rest of our life so doing something that we can sustain for the rest of our life so when you're choosing a diet please do consider that as a long-term goal also remember that everyone is different you may not react well to one diet but you may react really well to another diet and changing your lifestyle takes a very very long time guys so please don't have goals where by two weeks I'll have this sorted you know things happen your body sometimes doesn't react the way that you want it to and so you shouldn't set too many short-term goals more long-term goals of where you want to be in the future it will help in ensuring success as well also in terms of cutting out foods sometimes cutting out everything may be tough on the body in terms of side effects of um, detoxification and all that so you might want to cut down slowly so maybe start with sugar as an actual sugar cutting it down until you're not having sugar at all and not experiencing symptoms and then do sugar sweetened beverages and then do your um, fast foods etc you know do it at a pace that your body can maybe handle or if you do want to do it all at once do it all at once. It is all up to you and what will work best for you. Also, guys, do remember that calories are important. Even though you are not eating all the bad foods that are increasing your calories, if you are overeating vegetables and fruit, you can increase your caloric intake and lead to weight gain still. So do take that in con into consideration. 
The general guidelines is 2,000 calories for women and 3,000 for men, but it all depends on your activity levels and all that. So getting a medical professional may be best in trying to work out your daily calories um, so that you, you know, you're not having a calorie deficit or so forth. Thank you for tuning in. Please do like this video if you did enjoy it. Share it with as many people as you can so we can reach as many lives together. And subscribe to my channel if you wish to learn more about me and how I have developed as a person after I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. As well as learn different health conditions and how they affect the body. As well as ways that you can manage and prevent them. Guys, I hope you have a great week ahead and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.